Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Senior Tech Evangelist here at Dremio, here to talk to you about data ops for Iceberg with Dremio. Um, and bottom line is that data ops is really important because oftentimes we're moving data from a lots of sources through complex chains and, and webs of data pipelines in order to curate lots of data products. And there's a lot of things that can kind of go wrong and one, delay our time to insight and two, increase our costs because of those things that go kind of go wrong in the process. So bottom line is if we can prevent those things from going wrong, we can increase our time to insight, lower our costs, as well as making sure that data engineers are not spending time doing the things they don't like to do. Because in our State of the Lake House survey that we conducted last year, we saw that, well, data engineers are spending a lot of time on the things that well, they don't like to do. And a lot of it has dealing with a lot of these things that can go wrong versus really kind of building, uh, spending a lot more time on the things that really provide business value. Let's take a look at what some of these things are. Things like that, that data engineers don't like are things like managing tickets, going through raw data and cleaning it up, uh, reconciling data from multiple sources, uh, manual processes versus the things that they do like to do, which again, are oftentimes the things that provide the most value is like automating complex data workflows, helping other teams utilize the data better, transforming that data into clean, usable information and discovering meaningful patterns and trends in that data. These are really high value things that data engineers should be spending more time on. And this is where data ops comes in, trying to one, give you ways to manage data quality and ways to automate those processes. And basically with data ops, you can stop doing the stuff you don't like. You can stop optimizing the data for each workload. Instead, you can accelerate those workloads automatically with Dremio's live reflections. You can stop chasing data quality issues in production. Instead, you can ing ingest and validate that data in an isolated branch using catalog versioning with Dremio's Lakehouse catalog. You can stop dealing with data sprawl and copies and instantly provision no copy sandboxes environments for experimentation just by creating a branch. You can stop copying data across environments. You can generate no copy environments once again by making a branch uh, and then create multiple engines to work across those branches so that way you don't have to spin up expensive complex parallel environments. And you can stop spending your days recovering from issues because you can instantly roll back to any commit in your catalog or tag rather than spending hours and days backfilling the data back into a good state from a bad state. So at the end, it ends up becoming a much simpler looking story where basically we're taking our data sources and then we're using just Dremio with the power of commands like CTAS to create iceberg tables from our data sources or insert select and merge into to be able to add data to those tables, copy into to add data to those tables from data files like JSON, CSV, and Parquet files. We can use all this to bring data to our iceberg tables and again, use branching in order to validate that quality and then use integrations like dbt to help curate our layers of virtual views on top of that to create our virtual data marts or data products uh, within our data lake house and then basically we can accelerate all that really easily at the flip of a switch using our feature called reflections giving you sort of a very sort of turnkey way of sort of curating and delivering this data in the same way that MC Hammer would say hammer time, well, guess what? It's demo time. So I've kind of talked about what the promise is. Let's actually show it to you in action. And let's go through a sample scenario. Now, in this scenario, we are retail company X and carry a variety of products in our inventory at different locations across several categories. Now, our goal is to create a dashboard to see our inventory across different locations and product categories. So we can see all that inventory information pretty easily, but we have a little bit of a problem our data is kind of in a variety of different systems. We have some data in MongoDB, some data in PostgreSQL. How am I gonna easily get this data to where it needs to be um, so that we can do it? And the cool thing about this exercise, about this demo is that you can do this yourself, hands-on at this new blog post is actually publishing on, on the Dremio blog at the same time as this recording is. So uh, when this is published, you can scan that QR code, see that blog, and you can do the exact same exercise you're about to watch step-by-step. Step. But let's just set the paradigm because basically the way we're going to do it is well the better way but that's not always the way it's done the traditional solution is we would have our table of products in mongodb our table of products of inventory in postgres and we would etl that raw data 
to basically raw parquet files in our data lake and generate basically several layers on top of that. So our raw data would be in our bronze layer. Then we would do some work on that data and generate a silver layer, which is another physical copy of that data. So we're actually making more parquet files. And then we would generate a gold layer of even more sort of refined data for production use cases. But again, these are all copies. And then even then we're not done because we still don't do a lot of the work directly from the data lake. We're gonna move that data over to a data warehouse. And that data warehouse, well, we need to organize that data warehouse into a bunch of sub warehouses for all our individual business lines, aka data marts. And all of this is, again, more and more copies of the data and all the pipelines that kind of create the chain from one to the other. And then finally, we'd be able to hand the data over to the analyst and the analyst can then go create dashboards with their favorite BI tools. But oftentimes this is still not done because it's still not fast enough quite yet. So depending on the types of query they are, raw queries may need to be sped up by materialized views over there in the data warehouse, which would need to be maintained and curated by the data engineer. Um, also, sometimes we'd be using BI extracts and cubes, which might be done in the data warehouse, but also sometimes done by the BI tool. And the problem is if I'm using, you know, uh, acceleration technologies in one BI tool, well, that acceleration isn't available in other BI tools. So then I end up doing the same thing multiple times when I have multiple teams using multiple tools with the same data. When it comes to the Dremio solution, this becomes a lot simpler. We can have our table from our two databases and we can just connect those databases over to the Dremio platform and ETL that data using basic SQL into our data lake as Apache iceberg tables in a raw layer. But at this point, we can actually pass off the baton to the analysts and they can then go generate virtual views to generate that curated and production layer without having to create additional copies of the data all via SQL. And basically, once they've created those additional layers and done those transformations virtually, they can just feed that data right into their favorite BI tool directly from Dremio to build out those dashboards. Now, if they need a little bit of acceleration, well, that's easy enough. We can just use Dremio's reflections feature. And hey, when we want to manage that quality, well, we can, instead of having to create parallel environments, we can just use Git for data and to create a branch to isolate the ingestion of that data. And when it comes to sort of making sure that we can replicate the creation and updates on those views and layers of views pretty easily, we can just use DBT um, to really simplify that entire process. Again, overall, much simpler, less copies, lower cost, and you're delivering that data faster to where you need it. So now that we've seen the difference at a high level, let's actually watch it in action. So let's actually watch this whole scenario play out. So one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do is connect our data sources. So again, I would just click on add source, choose whichever data sources I need to connect to Dremio. There's a variety of different databases, data lakes, and data warehouses you can connect. But once I have my MongoDB and Postgres connected, all I gotta do is now create the structure of the data product I wanna create. So within the default catalog of my project, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a folder called the supply chain to represent my supply chain data product. Okay, now once that's created, I'm gonna create the structure sort of of the layers that I want in that product. So in this case, a raw layer, a curated layer for the sort of like joins and things like that, and then a production layer where I'm gonna have the specific views of that data that I really want my end users to use or that the analyst wants, depending on who's curating all this, whether it's the engineer or the analyst. Now, once that's all set up and I have my three layers, the next thing I need to do is ingest those tables from my databases into iceberg uh, tables that are in my catalog. So with that, I can just do simple SQL. I have the databases hooked up. So all I can do is use a simple CTAS statement, a create table as statement to move the Mongo table, the Postgres table, into Apache iceberg tables right on my data lake. And I can use Dremio's really easy to use SQL editor to do so. That has all sorts of great features such as auto, uh, auto complete, uh, you know, syntax highlighting, all sorts of things to help me write my SQL. But again, I don't only have to write SQL within Dremio. Dremio allows SQL to be sent to it through JDBC, ODBC, Apache Aeroflight, REST API. So really any tool that can orchestrate sending SQL through those interfaces can be used to not only send SQL from Dremio, but to automate that SQL. Okay, making it easy to automate processes here on Dremio. But now that I've ran that SQL, I have the two tables in my 
uh, on my data lake, and now I can begin creating my layers of views. So in that case, what I'll need to do is set up a dbt project, which I have here, and I've already configured this dbt project to have sort of three sections, a section for each of my three layers, raw, curated, and production, each map to a folder where I would write SQL files to determine what will be in those sections. So in this case, in my configuration, say that the raw layer will be made up of tables, while the curated and production layer will materialize views. Okay, so now once I've configured my dbt project, all I have to do is actually write these SQL files for my models, which right now we're going to do two, one in my curated layer, okay, which is going to represent the join of the two tables. So here we're going to join the two tables, just a raw join, so that's going to include all the columns. So not necessarily what I want my end user to have, but just a nice raw join that I can use to then derive more views from. And then in my production layer, I'm going to have a view that's only going to have the columns that I really want to make available for my end use case. Okay. And because of dbt special syntax, it's going to be able to run this SQL in the right order because it's able to pick up on the dependencies of one model to another. I just quickly run dbt. Now it's generated and ran that SQL. Wonderful, all successfully. So now if I head back over to Dremio, we'll see that I can find those views now within my data product. So I see the view in my curated layer, okay, that's going to have all the columns of the join. But then I created a view based on that model in my production layer that only has a certain number of columns that I specified in those dbt models. Now I'll notice that I want to rename that quantity uh, column to quantity. And I, there's another column that I'd like to add. So I just make those changes in my dbt model, and then I can run that model again. And ta-da, there I am. I am good to go. That's going to run. Once it's successful, those changes will be immediately visible from queries hitting my Dremio cluster. And again, that all this SQL can all be sent via any of those interfaces I mentioned earlier. So there we go. We've curated our semantic layer. OK, now before we go any further, Bottom line is we need to ingest some additional data. Okay, so we're going to pretend that, hey, some data has come in and we want to add it. Um, so what I'm going to do is that right now I'm making changes on the main branch. That branch is where all my production queries are going. So as I ingest new data, I, I really don't want it to be visible there. Because if it is visible there, um, then basically it may not be validated or cleaned up yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch that essentially um, allows me to isolate the changes to my data. So again, though any queries coming in, production queries, are not going to see the data on my ingestion branch. And then I can make those changes across several commits, and then I can go validate that data. And once that data is validated, I can then merge it back in. So let's actually go see this in practice. Okay, so here I go. I see what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just query the original Postgres and Mongo tables versus my iceberg table so that way you can see that there are additional records that weren't there before. So I'm going to run these queries. Okay, so now they're all running. And then I'm going to take a look at each the results of each query. And you'll see that there's 10 new records that weren't there before. So I see here 50 records. I go examine the, the, the query of the original table, and I can see there's 60 records there. Okay, so there's been 10 new records, and I want to add those to my iceberg tables. So I want to ingest that new data. Now, the thing when it comes to ingesting that new data, I want to do it in a way that I can make sure that I have time and space to do validations and, 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 and cleanup work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch. So right here, you see like this create branch statement that creates a new branch in my catalog. So a new isolated chain of changes to my catalog. Okay, and then within the context of that branch, by using this use branch statement, okay, I am now going to be operating strictly inside that branch. And then I can write my insert statements. So that way, those changes only occur within the branch. And if you take a look at my insert statements, you'll notice that I set them up in a way that it's only adding any records that have an ID higher than the highest ID in my original in my target table because I'm doing sort of an incremental insert. So again, you using US, US SQL with Dremio, you can do incremental workloads and depending on sort of the way you modeled your data. Okay, but basically what we're going to do is at this point we will uh, run this SQL 
so we can actually see it in action. So we're creating that branch. We're switching over to that branch. We are now inserting those records and ta-da. Okay, we've done our ingestion. We've added those 10 records, but they are only on the branch currently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a query so you can see that, they, that those changes have been isolated. So when I run these queries, you're gonna notice that the query on the main branch still only has 50 records, while the query on the ingestion branch still ha now has the 60 records, has the additional 10 records. Okay, now wonderful. So what does that tell me is that I have successfully isolated that work. And at this point, what I could do is I could, you know, do validations, I could do cleanup work. Again, all of this can be automated through sort of external tools that can send SQL through JDBC, ODBC, Apache or Flight, REST API to Dremio. So it could be through ad hoc scripts, using orchestration tools, whatever fits your workflow or your existing workflows. And once those validations are complete, we can then go back and now merge those changes in, in the same way you would merge changes in Git. Okay, and I can just do that by writing a quick merge statement. So I'm just gonna merge this branch, okay, right back into my main branch, publishing those changes across all the tables in my catalog in a simultaneous motion. So basically allowing me to do multi-table transactions, enabling multi-table consistency. So now that I've merged uh, that in, Okay, basically when I go back and I run that query again, we'll see that, hey, now, whether I query it on either branch, it should have 60 records because we have successfully uh, merged those changes in. So see 60 records, 60 records, 60 records. Okay, everything is wonderful. So we've ingested the data. How cool is that? So we've, you know, curated our semantic layer. We've ingested additional data. You know, really only thing that's kind of really left to do and is to create our dashboards based on this data, okay? And basically, in this case, I have Apache Superset set up on my laptop. I have my production view that we curated earlier, okay? But what I'm gonna wanna do is to make sure that I have the fastest BI dashboard possible, I'm gonna wanna create a reflection on it. And again, a reflection is essentially going to pre-aggregate uh, basically uh, da the data based on dimensions and measures that I specify. So that way when queries go up again, when those types of aggregate queries hit my table, Dremio will substitute those pre-aggregated pre statistics from the reflection, okay? Allowing to have sub-second speeds when you're querying uh, BI dashboard type queries. So in this case, I can choose the dimensions and measures that I wanna optimize for. And once I have done that, okay, so once I've chosen which which things I want to optimize for, I can just click save, okay, and that's going to begin creating uh, the, the reflection. And then I'm going to be able to then be off to the races when it comes to creating um, my dashboards, okay? So once the reflection's ready, I can head over to Apache Superset where I've already connected this data set. And now I can just say, hey, I want to make a chart based on that data set. So first we're gonna create a chart that shows us our inventory levels based on location. Okay, our different warehouses, we'll save that. Then we're gonna create another chart that will uh, basically show us the data by category. So what inventory category we have. Okay, so I'll generate that chart. And then I'm gonna create a bar chart that shows me my inventory uh, quantity based on each individual product name. Okay, so again, and notice how quick uh, I, I'm able to kind of just get all this stuff put together, okay? And mainly, you'll see like when those charts generate, an SQL query is being sent to Dremio in order to feed that chart, and it loads really quickly because those reflections are being used to accelerate those queries. So now I have my charts, I can then create a dashboard, put those charts on my dashboard, and voila, I have my inventory dashboard. And I can see that these queries were accelerated by Dremio's reflections. And that shows you sort of the end-to-end -end experience in working with Dremio using Dremio's data ops. Okay. Now, I really recommend getting hands-on with Dremio so you can actually see uh, the benefit of all this firsthand. Okay, and here are three tutorials where you can you basically start from a different sort of source system and deliver a BI dashboard, all from the, the uh, you know, from the safety of your laptop, okay? No cloud infrastructure is required. You can just try this out, get hands-on right on your laptop, whether you want to start off with Postgres and deliver a DI dashboard from Postgres, SQL Server, or MongoDB. Now, if you want to do the exact exercise that we just covered here in this video, we have this new blog that was just published, literally being published as this video gets published, um, where you can do exactly what we just did step-by-step step to see what the whole experience feels like when you're hands-on. But with that, hopefully this gives you a idea of just what the data ops story looks like end to end when you're using 
the Dremio Lakehouse platform to deliver the data to those who need it, where they need it, because you can take data from anywhere and deliver it everywhere. I'll see you all later.